perfection is in everyone. Uh, nobody's perfect, but they can be. Um, we may never reach that, but it's better to strive for it than to not. Since he was a kid, he was the, a little alien child. There was no difference between the guy who had tons of money and the guy who didn't. He was always that guy. He didn't wear different clothes when he was off stage. He wanted to be the subject of that intimacy. Tell me everything. It's kind of one-sided because it wasn't, couldn't do that. Couldn't have that kind of closeness. Closer than men could be to women. He was saying, I want to be as close as your girlfriends can be to you. I want to get closer than what we have. I want, if I was your girlfriend. Funny you should know about Paisley underwear. Now, shut your eyes. Shut our eyes. Shut your eyes. Okay. And I want to just point. Who is the one that's always late now? <laughs> Who is the one you think is going to get married first? <laughs> Who's the one that slept with Prince? <laughs> this Prince the famous Prince oh, yes. connection. How did this come together? I think Prince is very obsessed with music in every way. He's always going to clubs and getting records and finding out about bands. Through him, him liking our music, we just became friends. And it's been a couple of years since we first met him. He liked a song called Hero Takes a Fall. Was he, he really, in on the production of Manic Monday not with David Bowie? Prince sent you a tape, that the real you know, made up tape, that he played all the tunes, right. the, all the instruments and everything for the Manic Monday. As far as that story is concerned, it's true. I mean, Prince had sent you the tape. Well, he was in the studio at the time, so I went over just to the studio and picked up a copy of the tape. Yeah, but yeah. you didn't use it. No, we didn't. Correct? We, used yeah. it. we didn't use it. We did it ourselves. So, I mean, if yeah. we wanted to use it, it was offered to us. Yeah. But we chose to uh, redo it ourselves, oh. playing our own instruments. You know. it. Didn't even offend him, I wonder. <laughs> oh, no, no, he, he sent it as a demo to show yeah. us the song. He said, if you want to, go ahead and just sing over it, you mm -hmm. know, and we decided that wasn't really us. So we would just communicate over the phone and send him, we sent him a tape of the mix and called back the next day saying how much he liked it. I think most people it. do just, just use his track, it. so yeah. I think yeah. he was a little kind of surprised. surprised. I think, yeah. But I think in the end he liked it. the fact that we just mm -hmm. did it did our own so way much. and changed it. Did you arrange it so much? Is it so different from the original um, one? There's, there are differences. differences. There are differences. He's just pops in and out, you know, forever. Like bewitched. That's right. He came to the palace. I got word like Prince is here to see you guys. And then, you know, all of a sudden he's just on the stage. He showed up a, a few hours before and we, we didn't really know until, until we actually were just about to play the song Manic Monday that he was going to come out and play it with us. Challenge kind of funny. Oh, yeah. So what did he actually do? Play he played guitar with oh, us and, and sang. sang with me on the microphone, you know, doing the background parts and, and some yeah, of Yeah, it was great. He was playing exciting. parts, playing like like Jimi Hendrix riffs on the guitar. <laughs> but we Vicky looked to the side of the stage and there he was putting a guitar on and we all went. <gasps> I said, oh, I guess I guess I should introduce him. I've actually never been in the presence of that <laughs> sonic, <laughs> magical thing that was happening when he played guitar ever. It was like the guitar was part of his body. I mean, it was, there, there was, he was channeling a musicality from the inside out. It was all improv. It was just. Well, it is. Uh, yeah, awfully nice. We're gonna play a little blues, is that cool? Yeah, we, we pretended to know how that song went. We, we had no idea how to play it. That was kind of fun. Prince in an all-girl backup band. Yeah. yeah. 
I think he does that. <laughs> he liked it. He dug it. He dug it. it seemed to uh, be a good combination. Yeah. Of songs and, and band. Yeah, yeah. It came out quite well. Went top ten, didn't it? Yeah, number two. <laughs> Almost number one. <laughs> we flew back again. Mr. Nelson. Yes. That's his surname, is it? Yes, it is. I never knew that. Prince Nelson. Mm -hmm. No, what's his first name? Prince. Prince. You're joking. Is that no, right? No, Prince Rogers Nelson is his name. Yes, I suppose no. everybody talks to you about Prince, don't they? Yes, they do. And I don't want to be very different. Bobby Z. Hey. What, no, there was a, what, were you kicked out or did you leave? I, I, should, I shouldn't say kicked out, but I'm going to say, were you kicked out? Uh, or did you... <laughs> I'd say I was there for 10 years, so I wouldn't say kicked out. Okay, okay I'm sorry. Yeah. I got like the gold watch and see you, you know? Okay, right. <laughs> But it, it was me, Wendy, and Bobby. Bobby was let go of the same time. We actually went and rented a house in Palm Springs for two weeks together and like laid in the sun and like, what are we going to do? I think my attitude changed from the beginning. I think right from the beginning, I just said, I'm committed to this guy and I'm going all the way. You could just do these things. You could produce the miracles. We're going to be on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, sure. You know, bang tour in front of the stones, bang, you know? I mean, he just had the ability to do that through music. And that was, I knew that right away. I mean, I've never been more sure of anything ever. You decided that uh, you wanted to continue making music in your own right. And as we've said, you've done that. Yeah, I guess so. Is that a track written by yourselves? Uh, that song was co-written with a friend of ours, Jesse Johnson. It, it is, and forgive me for saying it, but it, it is very Prince. But he you... sounds like us. Uh. Yeah, that's probably a better word. Well, you know, you swap and barter and trade and learn and teach yeah, and, exactly. and steal and an give. Oh. And even exchange. And that's, I, I'm very confident of my musicianship. But, you know, as my profession goes, I'm a musician, so. I didn't take it as seriously as they did. Well, I thought I had a future because I figured somebody's going to play it with him. The, the band didn't hire me, he did. I didn't, for a minute, think that that would affect me. I think he started feeling like, oh, I need new friends. Like, my, and these friends are funky, too. And they were. It was Sheila's band. It was like Tony, Tony, Tony. And I started playing with Sheila in 86. When I joined Sheila's band, I was in the band for like a year and a half. And that's when Raphael and them came in the band. Yeah, yeah, that's the next step. I play gospel. I play funk. I play every club there was. And then it was, then right off the back, it was Prince. So now I'm in Sheila's band, and we're opening up for uh, Prince. We, yeah, we rehearsed everything. We, Prince didn't go out like that. Gotta be tight. I was pinching myself the whole time. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, this is actually happening. Oh, well, yeah, we're looking for drummers and keyboards. She had me do the audition. Levi Caesar got me the gig. He called me and said, you know, you want to audition for Sheila E in 86. And they said, oh, can I come and audition too? They said, can we all audition together? And I'm like, sure. So Raphael, I was like 18 years old, Tim, and then their cousin, Carl Wheeler. And uh, my friend Carl Wheeler, he played keyboards and it, we had already sort of formed. I didn't know really what to expect. At the time it was me and Tim, Tim, uh, Tim Riley, who played with the Tonys. He was the drummer. I got the gig first and then Sheila was like, don't bring back a drummer. I brought Tim back anyway. All three of us went. We rehearsed for like two months. 15 hours a day. It was it was like 100 people there that day coming for different positions. And they came in. It was greasy, man. After they played, I'm like, oh, auditions are over. Man, they came up and nailed it, dude. I said, Sheila, she said, what you doing up here so quick? I said, oh, it's over. She said, are you sure? Because there's a lot of people out there. And that's how they got in. Never mind the friends. <laughs> I need new friends. And these friends are funky. It was pretty much over on that tour. First time he walked up to us with a yellow suit on and he came, what's your name? And you know, everybody said his name and then he goes, hi, I'm Prince. We're looking like, no shit. Prince hired us to play for it because he was paying the bills basically. And then we went on a Under Cherry Moon tour in Japan. I know I wasn't fired for any musical reason. You know, we both expressed that we missed each other in musical ways. Not just, I miss seeing you because you're my asshole friend, you know. And he would say to other people, I wish Lisa was here right now. She knew what to play, you know. And so why, why did we have to separate? And for Wendy, the same thing. Well, I just had a good time hanging out with like, uh, Cubby was a sound guy. Saw the sunrise many, many mornings uh, with that young man. Brown Mark, I, I used to get play out of his rig, and I would sit in the baseball dugout. When he came out, he would come out uh, around the world in the day.
stadium, like all this sound. Never heard this much power before. So you could hear all the, the bass, and I'll just say the Revolution was the best band he, he ever had. Except, you know, I wish he was, you know, Death Stick. Jim Dez would have been there. Yeah, that, at that time, we're all arenas now. Okay. The Purple Rain, it was all arenas. And I would get a call on the intercom halfway through the show. He wants to play a show tonight. After He wants to do a show after the show tonight, an after show. And because the band was breaking up, Prince would use us to play all the after gigs. He would all get in a van and get taken from the venue right to that club. Prince would get on the bus. And he would play He would play Signs at a Time. It was a whole album. Bonnie Boyer. She used to show me licks. Now, one day we were sitting down, back of the bus, and just took my bass like, give me that. She and there would be some club somewhere, and the band would come probably 1, 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning and set everything out up. We would bring with us uh, his guitar, a bass, a keyboard, his pedal board rig, and that was really about it. And uh, turn all the house lights off, and they would play for a couple of hours to a sold-out club. Every club, Prince would call us to play instead of them. I would sing his parts in Erotic City. He would see me in the club, and he was like, come over here, I want to play you something. And then we'll walk to the speaker, he would look at the DJ, and he like, put your on. head in the speaker. So both of us would put our head inside of a foldy <laughs> cabinet, and then he'll point to the DJ, and then he'd play Housequake. They would have security guys come in and sweep through the place and make sure that nobody was in there recording. Very little lighting in it. Purposely, he, he liked things to be that way in order for people not to be able to videotape. Yeah, Rob, Raphael, they were not in the band at the time. It never got that far out. They put McDonald applications in our in our bunks. He had already told some of us in, in the band that he was going to be revamping the band for next year. So all of us are sitting there and said, well, you know, are we going to have a gig next year? Sheila was going to fire us pretty soon because she was going on to play on the Signs of the Times tour. I knew Sheila was on her way and we was on our way home. So it was Nico yeah. Weaver, me, you know, Bonnie, Bonnie Boyer, and Sheila. And, you know, he pulled us into the Sign, Sign of the Times band. Some say that was our audition for Sign of the Times. I mean, Prince pretty much adopted everybody out of Oakland, from Miko Weaver to Sheila's first band. Everybody Prince used after the revolution was all Oakland-based. And I'm Kathy Glover, and I'm 23 years old, and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Hey, what's happening? Cat, can you believe it? We are in the semifinals. <laughs> I met Kathy over a year ago with Tony Basil. She was in a battle dogging this incredible dancer. And she went like this. <laughs> it was so great. I think I just messed up her do. Anyway, ever since then, you know, we just had that magic. Featuring the now famous Cat's Cat, here's Pat and Cat. I've always wanted to dance with him, but it was never the right time. And I finally got to meet him in a club in L.A. And he asked me to dance, and I said, sure. I was really excited. I'm going, this isn't happening. He's not asking me to dance. And I was so excited when he asked me, and I said, sure, I'll dance with you. And we danced, and it was really nice. It was great. It was like the Twilight Zone. Everything was in slow motion. I couldn't believe it because he's incredible. We had come off the road from, from the parade gigs. This was in, in the fall of 86. I mean, literally, he just called me one day and said, do you want to play some jazz? <laughs> And I didn't, so what, what the hell do you mean by that? Well, come on over. He already had a lot of this music from the first Manhouse album already in his mind. Yeah, I think he already has some tracks done. So I want to do an instrumental album where you will ostensibly be, quote unquote, the leader of the band. It was a project that he created for me. I was going to be the original band for Madhouse, the group called Madhouse. But when we heard the band was going to be wearing like mask over their face. Although I think even if I had not been involved with him, it's something that he would probably have done. Because because, I mean, this wasn't something that he had done for any other member of his band. He had never, you know, I was the only guy he'd ever come say, hey, I'm going to do an album and you're the guy. It's a very high compliment to begin with. The other point is, is I got a piece of this. And we did that first album in three days. We all sat around and, you know, I'm like, oh, I have an idea. Our prince was like, oh, I got this idea. Eric will come or something. And we just kept working until we got the project done. Most of that stuff came together within a week. And just back, 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 just in it working together for three days like some man sometimes man I, I sit back and watch friends i'm like how is it possible that one person could have this much talent i mean in every area i mean singing dancing playing writing but he's doing it so effortlessly 